what is it that's causing there to be more particles of gas at sea level than there is at higher altitudes? No, 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 just don't ask QE. That guy doesn't know which end of a crayon to chew. Because the Atmos gases are produced, then released at or near the surface. Oh, man. So QE had a discussion with someone I think called Babs and then released a short video where he took the mickey out of Babs with lots of laughter track all over the place. Only the laughter should have been aimed at QE because he didn't have to say a lot of dumb. So I think let's get straight in it. So you were talking to us about gas pressure, QE. Go ahead and roll VT. Because the Atmos gases are produced, then released at or near the surface. Additionally, the volume at or near the surface is drastically lower than any points or sections higher from the surface. So this is basically your feeble explanation at the atmospheric pressure gradient, which is different than gas pressure. So if this atmosphere is being produced constantly down here at ground level, why isn't the atmospheric pressure down here increasing? Or is that because it's whizzing off to try and equalize and fill the available volume? In which case, why isn't the pressure rising higher up? And why don't we detect wind currents heading straight up all the time? Um, the pressure comes from the weight. And yeah, that does, in fact, require the force of gravity. Wrong. Gas pressure is not caused by weight. It's caused by gas molecules hitting the walls of the container. Well, I'd like to stomp on that straight away. Gas pressure is the effect of the molecules hitting the walls of the container or any other surface. Otherwise, if you placed a barometer in the middle of that container, you wouldn't get a reading. Now, if that container contains gas at 14.7 psi and you're at sea level, if you take the lid off, you will still have 14.7 psi. Actually, you could take the walls away and you'd still have 14.7 psi. Where you have pressure that's different, i.e. higher than atmospheric pressure or lower than atmospheric pressure, then yes, you'll need a container to maintain that differential. You, or anyone else for that matter, can't even define weight. Gravity doesn't exist. It's never been scientifically validated. Um, yes, we can, QE. Weight is mass times gravitational acceleration. If you take a mass on the Earth and then place it on the moon, it will weigh approximately one-sixth what it did on the Earth, because gravity is approximately one-sixth on the moon. Now, planetary orbits are based upon gravity, and the astronomer Urban Le Verrier noticed slight discrepancies in the orbit of Neptune. He calculated and postulated that another planet was causing this. He worked out where it would be, they went out and had a look, and they discovered Neptune. Even if it did exist, the current pseudoscience, Einstein's general relativity, states that it's not a force. So you're about 106 years out of date with your continuing education credits. Do you think centrifugal force exists, QE? No, it doesn't. But if you're spun round on a roundabout, you will get flung outwards. Centrifugal force is a pseudo force. You can think of it as a force, you can treat it as a force, you can make calculations with it as a force. The same with gravity. Oh, and never mind education credits. I've got a feeling your education is in debit. You know, gravity's not yeah. a force, so where does that leave you, my friend? Um, why is it not a force? Why is it not a force? You got triple-decker fallacies here. From logicallyfallacious.com Proving non-existence Description, demanding that one proves the non-existence of something in place of providing adequate evidence for the existence of that something. Hmm, go on. From cuny.edu. So the burden of proof rests with the person making the claim and a positive claim. 
It is shifting the burden of proof for the person making the positive claim to insist that those who deny the positive claim have the burden to prove that the positive claim is false. Bingo. Don't you forget that. I won't. So you have the positive claim of fairy tale gravity force. It's not anyone else's job to disprove your complete argument from ignorance fallacy. Clown. It's an extremely strong theory. Predictions are made on the path of the planets. Without gravity, you couldn't do calculations such as uh, for shipbuilding, because that relies on buoyancy. And part of the buoyancy equation is gravity. Jupiter captures comets and asteroids. It deflected the path of comet Schumacher-Levy and caused it to break apart. Its path was calculated and a prediction was made that it was going to collide with Jupiter. And indeed it did, on the date predicted. All based on calculations that include gravity. Right. And why, why does there have to be a container above the flat Earth? Because we have gas pressure and the necessary antecedent for gas pressure is a container. No, we have atmospheric pressure. It's very different from gas pressure. Why can it just not be, well, why could it be, why could it not be an open system? I don't see why you guys have a problem with that. Well, that would be a second law of thermodynamics violation. From the legend, Professor Frank Lambert, entropysite.oxy.edu. Gas expansion into a vacuum. Mixing of ideal gases or liquids, diffusion, effusion, colligative effects, and osmosis. Each fundamentally involves an increase in entropy. Yada, yada, yada. Well, I found your quote here. Gas expansion into a vacuum, mixing of ideal gases or liquids, diffusion, effusion, yada, yada, yada. What have you got to say about that then, QE? You see, gases will naturally always increase entropy and fill the available volume. Well, let's read an earlier bit, QE. The increase of entropy, identifiable most readily as a dispersal of energy at a temperature, gives direction to physical and chemical events. Energy's dispersing is probabilistic rather than deterministic. Entropy, my old China, is not a force. As a consequence, there may be small sections of a larger system in which energy is temporarily concentrated. Like, for instance, if I freeze some water into ice, or the way the Earth's atmosphere is forced to stay in place by gravity. According to the fairy tale Narnia Baltard religion, that volume is 3.58 times 10 to the 80th cubic meters. If the Earth was an open system, then that volume becomes immediately available to be filled. It's not filling that available volume because we have gas pressure and are still breathing. Ergo, the entire heliocentric Baltard spinning space monkey religion vaporizes. Only the entire volume of space is not strictly available. Remember, space being a vacuum does not suck. Entropy is not a force. All we're relying on is probability. Probability of molecules going in the right direction at the right speed to escape. And some do. Roughly 90 tonnes worth of atmosphere a day. But that's it. If there was, if there was a container, the, the pressure would be uniform everywhere. It wouldn't be, um, there wouldn't be a pressure gradient. It wouldn't be um, pressure. It would all be uniform if we were under a container. Fuck. Don't you think so? He's right. If there was a container that was preventing the atmosphere from clearing off into space, it would be doing so by preventing those molecules from escaping. I.e. those molecules would hit the container and not be able to proceed further. If those molecules are hitting a container, that's pressure. Gas pressure. Now, I sent up MAGE to about 38 and a half kilometers, and the pressure reading we were getting, atmospheric pressure at that height, was only 0.3% of atmospheric pressure. Had it been able to go higher, that pressure would drop lower and lower and lower. No container at all, anywhere that I saw. <coughs> No, I know so. And not if there was a container. There must be a container by definition and experience. Well, slap my ass and call me Shirley. Was that a positive claim, QE? Let's listen again. No, I know so. And not if there was a container. 
There must be a container by definition and experience. Let's have another listen to what the professor of applied dumb said when he actually got something right. So the burden of proof rests with the person making the claim and a positive claim. It is shifting the burden of proof for the person making the positive claim to insist that those who deny the positive claim have the burden to prove that the positive claim is false. Well, I've seen absolutely zero evidence so far for this container. But what about you? Well, I don't know about the firmament dome, but I do like fluffy kittens. Kittens. So come on, QE, it's down to you. This is your positive claim. You must show us evidence of this container. You must not try shifting the burden of proof. The gas pressure would be uniform in a closed static system, like a container of compressed air, but the Earth is a closed dynamic system, meaning it has many cycles, oxygen, CO2, water, nitrogen, etc., making your appeal a false equivalence fallacy. So you're saying that the pressure isn't uniform because it's a dynamic system, which would explain the um, atmospheric pressure gradient. So if when you go up high enough, there's next to no pressure, why the hell are you saying that we have to have a container to keep it in? You complete another gimboid. Additionally, appealing the gas pressure gradients, delta X, when the question is concerning the existence of X, gas pressure, is a red herring fallacy, irrelevant diversion from the mother begging the question fallacy. Oh, I don't think it's irrelevant, QE. Here's an image from Mage, just under 38,700 metres. We've only got 253 pascals of pressure. 99.8% of the atmosphere is gone. So what's stopping it from rushing up to this height? You can see this beautiful curve where the atmospheric pressure dropped at the start from about 100,000 pascals down to 253. You've got some explaining to do because there is no container that's stopping those 100,000 pascals from whizzing up here and equalizing. You dingleberry. On a personal note, these simple concepts based on the consequences of natural law reconciled within 10 seconds by incoherent second graders, were explained to you ad nauseum at least 30 times on FED. Five to eight of those by me. So you're citing explanations by yourself. A person who was dumb enough to show this Alice and Bob evidence against the globe Earth. So oh, I put... I put uh, the diagram uh, up Bob and Alice right here on the main screen. Folks, do you see what I'm talking about here? It's as simple as this. You have Bob and Alice. In this scenario, they're 40 miles away from each other, right? Every point from a tangent from Bob away from him is supposed to drop at eight inches per mile squared. But unfortunately, that's the same for Alice. Now, if these two guys start, start walking towards each other, there is no way around the fact that they're going to have to be walking downhill. Just that you can't get around this, right? At 40 miles, I don't know what the drop is, but it, it, you're going into an abyss. Well, the abyss you've just walked into is pretty darn deep. There's no coming back from that. I mean, how dumb are you? Dumber than a bag of hammers or a willfully blind, purposeful moron. Well, it turns out you have got something right after all, haven't you, QE? Until next time, stay sensible. Shut up and sit down.